Hey, thank you for joining the Escape With Me book club. Escape with me, Sam Reiner. And me, Hunter Mallard. Into our most recent read. Come with us as we evade reality and go into detail about our new book. We'll be covering this book from beginning to end, so there will be spoilers. Today, we're going back to Atlanta, Georgia, United States, Wonderland, and throwing in Tokyo, Japan for good measure. Published September 24th, 2019. Oh, what was that world like? A Dream So Dark is the second installment in the Nightmare Verse series. Things become dire as old friends come back to haunt and new friends make their appearance. Will everyone get out alive? And who is this mysterious villain practicing necromancy? I would like to know too. (laughs) So we have switched to the you pick one, I pick one format. And despite all your complaining (laughs) about this book series, you picked this one. Okay, the first book is what I complained about. I'm not complaining. I'm just confused. I definitely said that the book got slightly better as it got further into the book on the first one. So there were some things where I was like, well, if the story goes this way and it goes that way and you continue this trend then it could actually turn the series around so i wanted to give it a chance and here we are Mm -hmm. disappointed (laughs) so some clarifications from the last episode yes last book in the real world was only a week You thought it might have been two. It was only a week. Yeah. The twins are from St. Petersburg. And the Black Queen isn't dead. She's sealed away. And so that's why they can use the heart and the eye to bring her back. She's not dead dead. She's just hanging out. I never went back to check where it specifically said or whatever, but do you remember or do you know where it said that she was just sealed away and not dead in the first book? I think when I read it in the second book, that conjured a memory and I was like, oh yeah, that's what it said. Because they do say she was defeated. And I think the first time they explained that means she was like sealed away in some Tartarus form, I guess. Not sure where she's sealed away or how, but that was the vibe. It wasn't dead. Hmm, okay. So that's just a couple clarifications from last episode. Age level, still young adult. Content warning. Language, kidnapping, blood, nudity is implied. Monsters, gore, death of a parent. Judge a book by its cover. Uh, this one was okay. Uh, I didn't like it. I loved the first one. And so this one I was like, meh. The model still looks really cool, but I don't know. It was red checkerboard and then a heart, which I kind of appreciate, which makes me think there's going to be four books in the series because suits. But the picture in the heart was a dark forest. And so you already had a lot of dark things on the cover and then it was just really dark. And the back of the cover is a bigger version of that dark. I don't know. I know it's called uh, Dream So Dark, but I loved the contrast on the first cover because the classic black, white, and red, but alas. I don't know. I like simpler covers. I don't like where they're going more flashy. So all I got from the cover was probably we were going to have more of the same, but this time about the heart and the red queen, since the last book had a lot about the white queen and the cover was white. Yes and no. (laughs) Precisely. Yes. I don't feel like I'm wrong. But I don't feel like that fully encapsulates it. Yeah, we got a lot about the heart, I guess. The heart is involved. We got a lot about the Red Queen's palace. We thought. We thought we got the Red Queen. <laughs> Get the Red Queen. <laughs> and then we're just told, oh, wait. Nope. It's not her. And it's just like, wait a moment. This chick with red hair, red eyes, red clothes, has the heart. Wait a moment. It really feels like the author got right up to that point. And she's like, but I like the Red Queen. I have a theory, but we'll get there. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And then she was just like, I don't want her to be the villain. Let's change it. (laughs) No, I think it's threaded throughout this whole book, very specifically, that it's probably not who we think it is. There's just things they say where it's like, he never says his name. And like halfway through the book is Alice is like, who is she? And he's just like, my majesty, I I don't know what to tell you. And she's just like, that's weird. But I guess to start talking about it, I was just sitting there and I was like, I could see it going either way. I could see you liking it more or I could see you hating it. And I was just sitting there. I'm like, I'm going to laugh if he hates it still. (laughs) I will say this. It was better than the first book. 
Well, that's something, isn't it? It did. And I am having a very hard time internalizing whether or not I just got numb to all the things I hated. And so it's just not as bad because I didn't feel it or there was less of what I hated. I think there was less of what you hated because you didn't read them back to back. So I feel like if you had read a bunch of them back to back, it'd be like, yeah, you get numb to it. But you had a good chunk of time in between books. Mm, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. So I feel like that would reorient you a little bit. Yeah. Because a couple crazy things. We were sitting here shipping the Black Knight with literally everyone but the person he was with. (laughs) True. We were like, oh, him and Alice, him and Anastasia, him and Maddie, him and whatever. And it's like him and Hatta. Oh. Didn't see it coming. I gotta give her props for that. I mean, I was still disappointed because I wanted it to actually be Hatta. But it's Hatta's long lost lover. That's drama. Yeah. Like I said, I got to give her points for that. That was actually pretty good. I was like, ooh, that's interesting. I like that. We start off and Alice is blaming the... Okay. (laughs) I understand denial and needing to be angry at someone that's not yourself, but it went so far into the book. Alice kept blaming the Black Knight for breaking his promise about not hurting Chess. Ma'am, you were going to give him a fake eye. That is part of the bargain. Yeah. Last book, I briefly said kind of quietly, so you couldn't really hear it and you were confused. And you thought I had said that I hate Alice. And you were like, how can you like the book and hate the main character? Mm -hmm. Well. Was I right? Let's just say I'm very glad Hatta, the Black Knight, and Chess suddenly get perspectives. (laughs) I think that's what saved this book for me. Oh my gosh. Now that you've brought it up. Because you were over here like, does all Alice need is a hot guy? No. No, all Alice needs is a hot girl while her man is dying. Her best friend is dying. Like everything is going wrong, but she's cute. The girl is desperate for positive affection. That is for sure. This girl, I just can't with her. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I I get it. But priorities? (laughs) Maybe keep yourself in check while the world is being destroyed around you? Okay, this is just a theory, I guess. The fact that she's constantly jumping at any affection that's put towards her is, I guess, psychologically speaking, that's what people do when they're not confident they're ever going to get that feeling again. Oh, no, she has definitely been emotionally wrecked since her father died. And it seems like she has been desperate for positive attention since that has happened. Yeah, but one of the things is you're just not confident as a person in who you are to get that type of positive reaction from people consistently. And so you jump at the first reaction that you are given. And I don't know if that's supposed to play into the fact that she's fighting her muchness. I don't know. I just got tired. I feel like that's a stretch and I'm really trying to justify it somehow. (laughs) Now that you pointed it out, I think what made this book so much better than the first was that we got Hatta and Chess and what's his name? The Black Knight. What's his actual name? Humphrey. Humphrey. I don't know why it keeps slipping my mind. Just always does. But their perspectives saved this book for me. It really did. Although we can confirm, you did not believe me in the last episode, but we can confirm Alice has terrible motion sickness. It's bad. I guess. They were in the basket and she was like, I just want to die. I was like, someone get this girl some tramadol. It's literally the most uncool quirk you can give your main character, if I'm being completely honest. I'm fine with it. I know so many people. My husband has the worst motion sickness, too. I know, but this chick is supposed to be a hero. Come on. (laughs) I think it's lame, but whatever. I think it's fine. I don't think it's lame. I think it's so normal. And I like it better than some of the other ones that I've seen. Although I was about to say some of them are just dumb. And then I realized, wait a second, (laughs) Alice is also dumb. I hope the author knows it, too. There's another book series that we've done for the podcast that I'm obsessed with. And I love the author so much. I follow her on Twitter. And one of her tweets was literally like, everyone just needs to realize that every character in my book is stupid. (laughs) I was like, yes, 
I love it. I mean, if she's aware, whatever. I love it so much. So I hope she is also aware. Alice really makes this like when I think this book is for YA. Oh, yeah. No, it gets so serious and you're really into it. And then it goes back to Alice being in a bookstore. Without Alice, this is for like top level YA, late teens, sort of. 17, 18. Yeah. Yeah, 17, 18. With Alice, it breaks it down for me. I would give this to like a 12, 13 year old. I don't know about 12, 13. This is not mid-lit, but definitely a 15, 16. I would give it to like a 13 year old and be like, hey, have fun. <laughs> Good luck. You're not my kid. <laughs> they probably wouldn't even mind with all the slang and everything that continued into this book, unfortunately. Well, not at this point. And the accents that some of these audiobook people put it. All the male readers were doing fine. Oh, there's male readers too? I didn't listen to the second audiobook. Yeah, they got four readers for this one. I'm jealous. Yeah, there's Alice one where she, oh, I don't even really think it's her fault. Maybe it is, but she puts heavy emphasis on a lot of the accents. Is it the same voice actress from the last book? Yes, but the male voice actor who did had a Oh, I love this man's voice. He could read to me all day long. I love it. He's got that natural, I don't even know if it's natural, but that British accent he has going on when he's doing Hada, I'm like, nice. I mean, even if he is British, the conversational tone that he has and the voice acting voice are probably a little different. Even the one for Humphrey or the Black Knight, also really good. What was his accent? Was it just normal? Well, I mean, normal. American standard? It was relatively normal. They also had pretty deep voices. Oh, that's kind of weird. I mean, I guess they look 19, but are older, but... They're not super deep, but they are on the deeper, almost raspier side, I guess. I'm comparing it to, I guess, your normal... Teenage boy voice? Yeah. What about Chess? Chess, I only heard him a few times, but his was normal. American Standard, which makes sense because Atlanta. But when Hada's voice actor actually, which the female actress did not, he put a Southern draw on Courtney's dialogue. Yes! And it was a little bit thicker than I would think someone in Atlanta would have, to be honest. But I was not complaining when he did it. It was fine. I think it depends what part, yeah. Yeah, but the voice actress, every time she tried to do accents or anything like that, I don't know. So maybe the first book is really just that voice actress really screwed me up on it. That's why I'm hating it. You liked her last episode, don't even. I don't know. She did all right, I guess. I just, I'd have to go get the book and see exactly, follow along. And does the book actually make Alice seem like normal black girl from Atlanta would sound or not? Because I don't know. Some of the terminology she uses is just, ugh. I don't know. There's just points where people are just talking normal. They're in Japan and doing all this. And then she says something like, for real, for real, or something like that. And I'm like, come on, girl, please. Just act normal. I think it's a different voice act. No, it's the same one. It's the same voice actress. Never mind. That took way too long. There were only three voice actors. Okay, then I think the one that did Humphrey did chess too. I thought it might have been a different one, but I guess not. But to talk about people that have made a complete 180, I love them now. Courtney is awesome now, and I kind of love her. She leads to a huge plot hole where the first book, Alice goes to Wonderland and gets all the superpowers. And you were like, why don't they just do that with her friends? Yeah, and then that happens. And then- Courtney doesn't get superpowers. And now I have questions. <laughs> what exactly do you need to do to go through the portal to get superpowers? Yeah, I'm with you on this. I don't understand. And to get the other thing out of the way that bothers me, the madness doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> Screw the madness. Yeah. It kind of played a part in the first book. We're going to mention it in this book, but does not bother had a one second. Neither does his little proximity spell. Well, no, they did say something about that. Yeah, he was so weak afterwards. He was so injured. They have to get him back to the real world. Not really. It was literally just there to be like, he's dying at the very end. Yeah. He's dying from this. He's like, oh, this hurts. Anyway. Anyways, we're just going to save him real quick. And then, yeah. (laughs) It's just like, what? Excuse me? Oh, now that I have recovered from my other injuries, I can really tell how it hurts my heart. Well, there's a few chapters 
there was only like a couple actually that I can recall where it was had his perspective and the quote unquote madness you could hear him. It was kind of like convincing him or trying to get him to do stuff. Yeah, it sounded kind of like Humphreys where he hears a voice to tell him to do orders sometimes. Yeah. And Chess experienced that at the end of the first book, which I thought the Black Knight was calling him. Apparently, Lady Mystery was calling him. It's hard to tell with, you know, text. Mm, That's just, I'm just so peeved by the end. Can we just talk about this real quick? Okay. How are we going to defeat this woman? And we don't even know who she is. And then we're just all going to go back to our normal lives. Yeah, that's pretty YA urban fantasy, honestly. Wait, no. I'm sorry. I'm sitting there playing Persona 4. People are getting murdered out here, and we're going to have a 20-minute talk about funny glasses? No, Yukiko, we are not. I am assuming those creepy guys were humans turned into whatever Black Sludge or, or something like that. They didn't even go into that, did they? Okay, so... They were beings that died that they did necromancy, but it's not like, oh, brings them back to life, makes them more like the original zombie, like thralls. Okay. So they're still dead. Okay. It's just this weird amalgamation of them. I just, this woman is supposedly doing all this, and then we supposedly kill her or whatever and then oh it's time to just go back and live our lives well i don't know they're living their lives as much as regrouping they really did have to get had up away from the castle well yeah but i'm just like that's just it i don't know it just bugged me i was expecting some sort of scene from the hobbit where galadriel banished the dark lord back into mordor and then you had he must be destroyed and then sauron comes in he's like leave sauron to me one of those building into the next book sort of scenario scenarios and then all we got is epilogue oh yeah they're back home you know blah blah, blah. group chat Woo-hoo. what honestly at this point okay this is me being super realistic if she misses any more school she's gonna get in huge trouble what are you talking about this is only like a few days she's missed so much school no this was less time than the first book <laughs> i think about that often because i've talked about i like the spider-man homecoming the i have to do real world things i have to do spider-man things but I have to do real world things but I gotta do Spider-Man things and so I really like that her real world things was Courtney's birthday which we have belabored to the ground and her mom Mm. I okay Listen, I'm a little stupid sometimes, okay? I will preface that before I say this. I got halfway through the book, and then she's talking with the Japanese girl, and the Japanese girl apparently is into Sailor Moon too. and I was just like, oh, oh, whatever. And then it occurred to me, I was like, wait a moment. She wrote these books like flipping anime, like a Sailor Moon episode where she's got one life, and then she's got this secret life. This is literally why this book is the way it is. And then at the end of every episode, you go back to the beginning, yeah. She literally just took full inspiration from anime. Yeah. Curse you, Sailor Moon. Yeah, Sasuke has been cursed by one of the legendary people. It's terrible, the worst thing in the world. We're not going to talk about that for a while. Why doesn't Naruto go hang out with a pervert? Yes. For three episodes. (laughs) Yes. Oh my gosh, this all makes sense now. This author makes sense now. And this is why her book is crap. Because TV shows don't translate to books well. I was fine with it. I think you're just salty. No, no. It's like if someone got up and was like, yeah, this soap opera that I really love, let's turn it into a book. Why? I just can't do this. How many filler episodes are we going to do? I think it still stands. There's a lot of tropes that she uses, but I like all the tropes, so it's fine. Sure. Sure, but like you were saying, why put in the fillers? Why do we have filler episodes in this book? I definitely think the author grew up with Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon, obviously, but I still like it. I'm glad you did. I have never seen a Sailor Moon episode, but you know, it's fine. I've seen enough anime. I have not seen Sailor Moon, but I've seen enough anime that are close to that to know all this. I think I would understand the author on a new level if I just sat down and watched Sailor Moon. Probably. But a lot of the issues we have with Alice, I think goes back to the thing I had an issue with Hatta in the beginning. Why are we hiring one teenager to guard the gate? Yeah, why don't we have an army? 
why don't we have several? And I mean, yeah, adults will have to have real jobs, but not really. They can live at the bar and be a like, quote unquote bartender. I don't know what the heck Hat is doing. Like, just have them live at the bar. Listen, I'll tell you right now, they are in Atlanta. Hit up Georgia State. Georgia State's got so many kids going there that need extra money on the side, and they would so do this as a part time, okay? They have flexible schedules too. I just, I don't understand. Oh, finally, we found one. Well, we're going to wait until she quits to try to find a different one. And a teenager! She's got parents! Yeah. D and Dim's parents don't give a crap! Yeah. They've been missing randomly since they were 13! <laughs> the girl from Japan at least lives at the bookshop with the lady. That makes sense! I'm going to be honest, all those chapters where she had to go with her mom to see her granny. Oh, don't you hate on those? The granny is amazing. The granny's awesome. I love granny. I just hate the whole concept. Why are we doing this? Just go. If the world is at stake here, okay, say, Mom, I can't. I'll explain later. And then just leave. I don't think that would work out well. She's almost 18. Okay, so she actually tells her mom in this book, and I think that was the correct thing to do. She didn't tell her? Granted, the reason she told her mom was the Black Knight destroyed their house. Thank you. That's not telling her. That's going, oops. And everything the mom said, I was just like, yes, that's right, mom. That is right. <laughs> She's angry cooking. Everything she says is straight fire. You are right, ma'am. That is correct. Yes. I will give the author credit on this. If my mom figured the same out, she would say that same stuff. And she was right. Mm -hmm. But can we also talk about how she just kisses Chess when he shows up out of nowhere? Yeah, you were talking about Chess, use your words, sir. I think Alice needs to use her words. Yeah. I think everyone needs to use their words in this, honestly. Yes. That was one of the things. So I brought up last episode, my friend Danielle, who hates all fantasy books ever, but liked the first book and hated the second book. And her thing was, why is everyone in this weird, totally sexually fluid, everyone's crushing on literally everyone? And I get what she's saying. It is so messy. They should honestly all just get this huge compound. This decagon of love going on. And just go at it. Just get this whole compound and just go live on it and do whatever you want you freaks i don't get it it's so messy and it's so confusing who am i cheering for again i think i'm cheering for courtney to say single honestly but just because you're bi doesn't mean you flirt with everyone that's such a bi stereotype too i'm not letting this go i think this in particular is just completely unreasonable and just baffling to me the kiss with chess she just got done making out with Hada. Oh, yeah. And I don't blame Chess because he doesn't really know that Hada's a thing. Yeah, yeah. And so he's like, oh, this girl that we've kind of been together, we've had feelings, we've almost gone on dates. It kisses her. And I'm like, okay, yeah, Alice? <laughs> But after everything happened, he walks her out to the car and everything like that and has this whole exchange and emotional farewell. I'll see you, you know, blah, 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 all this. Oh, wow. They're like a thing now, you know? They even talk about it on the ride there, her in court. And Hada has this whole conversation in his head where he's like, I'm seeing the lover I used to have, but now I have a new love. And it's like a whole thing. And she's out here running around. And then she's out here like, Chess runs towards him. Chess. It's like, what the? What's wrong with you, girl? I'm glad to see you are hating the correct person. Your grandmother should slap you silly. I don't know the grandma's here for it. <laughs> she's so funny. I love her. So grandma sees her kiss Chess and she's like, don't worry, baby. I'll definitely keep it a secret. And then later on in the car with the mom and she's like, oh yeah, you and your boyfriend? And the mom is like, what? If that grandmother knew the whole story, man, she'd be yanking Alice. Mm. Oh yeah, but I just love what a messy bench she is. She's like, let me cause the most chaos right now. As a reader, that was very awkward. I feel like that was just the biggest mistake. Why? And I'm still questioning why. And then I'm going through it. And the whole thing with her grandmother, they keep bringing it up. I'm like, as a reader, I just kind of want to forget she did this because it's making me not like her at all. I thought it was funny. Every time the grandmother was like, oh, your boo thing. This is making me hate Alice so much. Alice deserves all the crap she can get. 
frankly. Yes, I feel like Courtney should have been like, oh my god, girl, you've got problems. Yeah, but Courtney's out here, the poor th- she's in Wonderland, she can't do crap! She is just living day to day, doing her best, and she does. She went survival mode. She's out here like, I have a heel, I will try to use this. Stabby stab. And they're like, Courtney, please don't. I'm gonna stabby stab <laughs> with this stiletto heel. I will say that was pretty funny. I feel like she went survival mode. But that's totally something a teenage girl of her archetype would do. Like, I could see my self doing that (laughs) okay this is the weapon i got i guess this is happening and the other two people with actual weapons are like please don't (laughs) you might hurt yourself (laughs) please don't get yourself killed here i feel like reality hit her like a brick wall and then she straightened up and was just like oh i'm gonna mature like five years i don't know i think we just got so mad at her about the birthday thing i don't know she just turned around courtney is great is it just me i want courtney to become a poet that would be dope she can't fight and do the stuff but i can totally see her learning to become a really cool healer that's so dope that's a great idea right then we have maddie and courtney i gotta give you props on that one i didn't even think of that but heck yeah heck yeah i would enjoy that i'm here for it i'm here for the bad a healers let's go but i want her to have more than just healing i want her to get verses where she can do magic maybe that's her superpower she gets that would be cool and she deserves it she was solid she was good she turned completely around By the way, I think this is just absolute BS and a waste of words on a page with whole Alice's new powers. Am I the only one that feels like that? Alice's new powers? Yeah, like the bubble thing. She had them in the last book. No, like the bubble. Oh, the bubble. I thought you were talking about the light thing. The light thing is whatever. Okay. She's special. Yeah, I have questions about the bubble. But the bubble is just, I feel like this is a waste of paper and ink to go over this. I had a moment where, because last book I was like, oh, I wonder if this author would do a Wizard of Oz. And so I had to sit there for a second. I was like, this is still Wonderland. We are not Glinda. Why are we in a bubble? Yeah. I mean, a deus ex machina, honestly. Since you mentioned Wonderland, am I the only one very disappointed in the fact that we didn't get any interesting descriptions or funny interactions with people in Wonderland? You can't play both sides of this. You can't complain that they're not being serious enough and then complain that they aren't silly enough. No, I'm talking about the weirdness of Wonderland that's supposed to have weird stuff in it that doesn't seem the way it is. They did something with the branches, roasting marshmallows, and it's like, okay, cool. And then for the rest of the time they're in Wonderland, they might as well be trekking through New Zealand. Okay, so here's the thing. The big revelation we get is that there's a world in between the real world and Wonderland. Spriggs shows back up, by the way. Oh yeah, this whole thing. Glad you were introduced in the first book, I guess. I don't remember him at all. He shows up when she's in the in-between world because I forget why. She got hit or something. He's allowed there. (laughs) Anyway, she's in the in-between world and Spriggs shows up and is like, hey, you're in between the worlds. Don't know how to get out except go down. Bye. Spriggs, it's not that hard. Literally, physically go down. Why are you confused? And then Alice normally has her eyes closed and apparently everyone else does. But if you have your eyes open, you realize the portal between Wonderland and and the real world is you just go up? Yeah, you rock it into space. <laughs> I get the rabbit hole, but what? Are you telling me no one has ever opened their eyes? I mean, the first thing I would do is have my eyes open. I gotta see where I'm landing, you know? Maybe not the first time I was like wind and stuff, but I'd try at some point. Granted, Alice probably would have tried because she's trying not to die, but I don't believe the other people did. You're telling me the twins didn't try to keep their eyes open? <laughs> I know, right? With their personality? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, I hope you liked the twins in the last book, because screw them in this one. Oh, man. They gotta go back to their portal. Bye! Yeah, we've had enough of them, I guess. And I'm over here like... <laughs> I am just so bummed that it feels like the author couldn't handle the amount of characters she introduced. We barely get the princess. We kind of get Zeleon, but not really. I wanted their romance to go somewhere. No, that just kind of sat on its laurels. They're the only 
one that I'm sure about, though. So I'm not going to complain either. <laughs> <laughs> the only ones I'm sure about. <laughs> Those two are together. I'm sure of that. I don't know what this is. So in the epilogue, apparently Alice and Hedda are together. And I'm over here like, but what about Humphrey? What's going on here? Okay, here's the thing. I don't like that Humphrey likes Alice. I don't like it. It's weird. You are supposedly an expert on these romantic things. We already have a love triangle. Wait, does this qualify as a love triangle? This is a love square. Okay, that's what I thought because they all like each other. Except Hada has confirmed him and Humphrey are in the past and Chess, I'm pretty sure, is still straight. Wow, trying to draw this is hurting my head. We have one point that's only pointed towards Alice's point and then we have a kind of a triangle? It's just a bunch of arrows, honestly. It's a relationship chart with just arrows pointed at Alice for everyone because she's the main character. It's honestly all I have. I don't know. This is weird. He has no reason. He's like, oh, since the first time I saw her, I knew I wanted to protect her. Ew! No! Why? This is Alice. This guy's weird. See, do you understand where I was coming from, though? I'm reading this book all the way up to the point where we haven't confirmed who this guy is, and I'm over here like, it still could be Hada. It's gotta be, right? Because he's fighting to not harm her, right? And I'm over here like, yeah, that's a Hada thing. The real Hada is fighting against this. It's just really weird to think about two separate guys separately saw this girl and was like this one yeah that's why i was like there's no way this is not hada right and then it's like i'm humphrey and i'm like who are you what why do you like her why do you just have this fixation on this chick that you met a week ago chess and alice have been friends for forever okay fine alice and hada have been fighting forever like a year and a half but that's forever in teenage years fine you literally just walked up on this girl and it was like that one you walked up on her and then stabbed her in the hand that's your first interaction but no i was trying to protect her this whole time liar why i'd be more interested in the drama of humphrey not having his memories and starting to be like wait i think i have feelings for this person but he has feelings for another person what's going on what is my life who am i figure yourself out sir before going for a 17 and a half year old. Yeah. Ah! Yeah. And then we just get this rushed background of the knights, all the knights in the background of Hada and Anastasia, Humphrey, and however you say her name. Yeah, the white knight, the red knight, Hada, who eventually became the black knight, and the duchess. Yeah. She was like, nah, I'm the duchess. And I'm over here like, this was a really rushed background, I guess, because we're getting it at a weird time. I don't know. That was weird. I don't know. I will say say Anna Kingston kind of got me a couple times <laughs> with some of the things my favorite thing I just cackled after reading it because it's something I could totally hear Nana Kingston voice. After Nana Kingston sees Alice kiss Chess, and Chess is a very pale white boy, and Alice is a very dark-skinned black girl. And Nana Kingston just says, my baby like the swirl, and I just died. <laughs> it's so equally cringy. Cringe humor gets me every time. It's so cringy, but at the same time, it's a little bit witty, and it's you know she's messing with her too it's just ah it's so good this book still had every time alice was in the picture it still had even others still had the same problem with me where why are we focusing on everyone's race so much why are we still describing everyone by their race I think she's the only black character, which is surprising. Oh, no. I mean, the princess, but she's barely in this book. I'm just, I don't know. And even some of the jokes and everything, I'm like, I just don't recall any other book I've read where it's just this much where they're describing characters constantly from this black character or this white character or this Japanese character or this character, this that character. Like, I don't know. It just bothers me. I can't help you there. I don't understand why. Wonderlandians get a paragraph of descriptions except for Humphrey we got that he's a redhead and has blue eyes thanks <laughs> and then the normal people are just like meh except for D and Dim D and Dim were very well described <laughs> Everyone else is kind of meh. I don't even think I know what hair color Chess has. I don't. I have no idea. I don't think I know what hair color Courtney has either. See what I mean? I'm imagining Chess with purple hair and Courtney with black hair, because why not? Courtney's got blonde hair, 100%, because she's supposed to be the Southern Belle. Uh, 
I could see it. Okay. I just don't understand why we have to stop and address every little thing like this. Like we're going through the village and everything and all we get for all those inhabitants, there are multiple different colors of skin. I mean, I do find that interesting, but I would have loved to know that if they have different hair colors. What type of people are they? Do these look like farmers? Do these look like blue collar workers? Or do these look like hippies? Do these look like traveling nomadic people or no? people? I don't know. I feel like I got a good vibe off the Dragon Village people. They were kind of farmers in a rural town that they have giant dragons. Kind of like people would have horses, I feel like. What from the book gave you that impression versus what you just came up with in your head? They talked about the enclosure that the dragons are in. She talked about walking through the streets of the town. And then definitely in the aftermath, when she was talking about the buildings that got destroyed, it seemed like not a small a farm, but like a community, but not a city to completely switch topics. I'm surprised her mom was okay at the end of this. I thoroughly was expecting someone to come for her mom because they kept being like, oh, please check in on my mom. Please check in on my mom. I mean, she didn't have anything. Right? And so I kept being like, oh my gosh, if they're not watching the mom, something bad's gonna happen. And then granted, I think the book ends before she gets home, but I don't think that's where we're going. I don't know. But Alice asked her to go stay with Nana Kay, which I was just like, oh, great. So put two people in one location so that you can grab both. That's what was going through my head. I think the thing was if something happens, someone would notice. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. But we're right at near here. This is the first time that we noticed something weird's going on. Before school, Alice uses Courtney's phone to call Hada to fill him in on stuff. She talks to Courtney. And this is the second time she sees chess, which is imposter chess, we find out. He very specifically says that they have encountered her. And I immediately went to Powerpuff Girls. A villain so villainous. The only thing we call. You have you seen Powerpuff Girls? You know what I'm talking about, right? Nope. Oh my gosh, what is wrong with you? I know of them. Well, there is a villain. And the introduction to this villain is that the villain is so villainous. You can't even say their real name. All you can call them is him oh and so the character's name is him okay and so that's the vibe i got it was like we have encountered her and so this is pretty early in the book i was getting the vibe of this isn't the person we think it is is it yeah i don't know i was just like i guess she just wants to keep her identity a secret but then i'm over here by the end i'm like wait she wanted to keep her identity a secret so badly yeah and then at the very end no one knows who she is <laughs> You could have told everyone. Yeah. <laughs> and it's because she did a good job. No one has said her name. The Black Knight, Humphrey's over here like, Her Majesty. That is what I got. You are so successful that you will never be known. Wait, what? She was so successful in her task that you were disappointed. This was teased through the whole book. My lady, we don't know who this this person is who could it be oh it's the red queen oh it's not the red queen well who is she we don't know we, we won okay nice who is she i have theories i don't feel like we won i feel like we've been duped i mean they don't feel like they won either but i feel like we lost this battle we still don't know her name they're all alive they're back together i want to be there and literally be in that moment and be like, no, you guys cannot leave until you tell me the name of this chick, until you figure it out. Well, you know what's a little funny? What? I am so glad that we have read them when we have read them because there is a huge gap in time between the publishing of the second book and the third book. Oh, is there? Ken. You imagine you read this in 2019. The first book out, came out in 2018 and you're like, okay, next year we're going to get the third book. We're going to figure this out who this woman is. And it's 2020, 2021, 2022. 
then you're like, this book is never coming out. And then in suddenly, out of nowhere, September 2023, we get the third book. Four years later. Can you imagine how mad you would be? I'd be emailing the author. I'd be like, who is she? Just tell me. I know your book's not coming out. I am writing you a letter to show you how seriously I am taking this. I don't care. You're obviously not publishing a third book. Just please tell me. Just tell me who she is. I gotta know. I'll print out a meme and send it to her. Wait a second. What? Don't tell me the third book doesn't tell you. This series is a trilogy. No, you cannot have covers with spades, hearts, and then a club and only have three books. (laughs) Ah! (laughs) Calm down. Calm down. I agree. The marketing person in me has awakened. (laughs) That's all it took, huh? I care so much more about this than anything we've said. Okay, you know what would also make you really mad? This book came out in 2019. In 2020, February 2020, people were giving reviews to the book, like given to someone early. Mm -hmm. There were reviews of the book in 2020, and this book didn't come out until 2023. What? I'm so confused. Wait. So when a book's being published, a lot of times authors will send it to readers before it's actually published so they can go ahead and review it. And so then when their book comes out, they already have reviews. So people feel more comfortable reviewing it themselves. And so it looks like originally it was going to come out in 2020 and then something happened and it didn't come out until 2023. COVID hit all of us hard, man. Do you think Spriggs is the March Hare? You think Spriggs is who? The March Hare. When Alice goes to the tea party, she meets the Mad Hatter and the March Hare. Hmm. Is Spriggs the March Hare? He hangs out at the bar, he drinks there, and when Addison's like, oh, I need to call in a favor to get Alice out of the Knox, he's the one who shows up. I guess. And his hairstyle is like two puffs on his head. That's kind of like ears. Yeah, I guess. That's my guess. We're missing the white rabbit, and it's bothering me. I can tell. Maybe Courtney has, like, platinum blonde hair. But she's not the reason that she gets sent into Wonderland. She doesn't have watches. Never late. She gives the vibes of a queen is never late, so everyone else is just early. Yeah, but she drives like it. Not because she's late, just she's a bad driver. Like, there's just facts. (laughs) Maybe that's the third book where we get another male character that's also crushing on Alice. Please, I'm so tired. (laughs) You're tired? So tired. I can get down for a love triangle, but... I'm just... This chick doesn't deserve it. I'm so tired. (laughs) I don't want to keep up with this anymore. Can we please have some boundaries somewhere to be like, this is where we are? Yeah. I'm so tired. (laughs) It's kind of making me uncomfortable. It's giving me really weird vibes. I mean, some of them are giving me weird vibes. Besides Chess, the two other ones that are crushing on Alice are literally hundreds of years old and she's not even 18 yet. I can't say too much. I liked Twilight, so... Oh my gosh. Tons of people did. I'm not going to fault you for it. I will give vampires something. You kind of run out of people. You're just going to kind of keep running into people younger than you. That's just facts. There are so many Wonderlandians. (laughs) Apparently, yeah. You could not be in love with a 17 and a half year old who is not emotionally immature enough for a relationship. Yeah. Facts. But Hannah doesn't know she kissed Jess! Yeah, still. And then she's out here crushing on the girl from Japan. I need to look up their names. I don't have them on my head. It starts with an H. Har- Haruta or Har- Har- something. Haruka, the dreamwalker for the Eastern Gate. Romy is the gate guardian, the former white knight. Who hates Hada? I mean, I guess fair, but why did you get in trouble? Why are I'm Anyway. I think it's just her duty. A little confused there, but Alice needs to go to college and have a messy phase, it seems like. Just let her go. Can we just say something about how we had a whole, I don't know if it was a page or whatever, about this, where are they called the Val- no, Furies? Is that what those creatures are called? The dragons? Yeah, the little dragons. But the one of them is supposed to belong to the Red Queen. We got this whole thing. Yeah, and he won't let anyone else ride, yeah. Yeah, it's Furies. And then that was it? 
nope, he's just going to sit there sad. We're going to hang out with the other one. But they got attacked and released. I was like, oh, she mentioned this one. <gasps> Maybe Alice is going to ride him. Maybe this is going to be a cool hero moment. No, I think the Red Queen's going to come back and ride him. That's my thoughts. I think it's going to happen like Spriggs, where Spriggs got introduced and we're like, I guess this guy's here. And then the second book comes up and we're like, Spriggs, thank heavens you were introduced last book. I don't know. It's just kind of weird. I don't think she's riding any Furies, not with that motion sickness. She couldn't handle the basket. I don't know. There's so many other ways to introduce or hint towards stuff that's not so jarring. We're in this whole scenario where we're preparing to do this, blah, blah, blah. Oh, let's just take a little side note here. Hey, you see that over there? Yeah, keep that in your mind. All right, anyways, continuing forward. (laughs) What? This one makes more sense. Spriggs, you could have introduced in this book. I do think it would be a little weird if she wrote a fury and it's like, oh yeah, the other one in the 10. That's the Red Queen. Next book, if it becomes relevant. So I get that one a little bit more, but I think she has a habit of introducing things and then pulling it next book. I feel like you've gone to Ikea, right? You're just walking through and your significant others just point and say, oh, look at that. That's cool. Anyways, continuing on. That's what it feels like. And then you walk by it in the warehouse and you're like, oh yeah, that thing. Yeah, why? I feel like we're just going through and this author's like, oh yeah, look at this. This is really cool, right? Well, anyways, does that have anything to do with the story? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. You'll find out next book, just like her name. Is it going to be relevant at all right now? Not really. Who knows? We haven't read the third book. Okay. Nice to see whatever that is. Can we get back to... Yeah, we can go ahead and get back to the main story. Let's go. <laughs> Come on, sweetie. Keep up. Keep with the tour group. <laughs> I don't know. It's just jarring. She's done it so many times. So we've kind of trashed the heroes here for having terrible plans and having weird pacing. Can we talk about how this random queen has terrible plans? <laughs> Not queen has terrible plans. Bloody lady. Because we get more of her because of the Black Knight's perspective. So he has done all of these things for her. And she's like, I don't trust you. You're holding back against Alice. He has almost murdered her three times. (laughs) No, you're holding back. You're just protecting her. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm just going to say this. If your hero is as dumb as Alice... You need a villain that's even dumber. Otherwise, it's unrealistic that they beat her. (laughs) Oh my god. How many wives have I said that? (laughs) If we had competent adults, the teenagers wouldn't be the ones having to save the world. I'm just saying, the villain in this scenario cannot be any smarter than Alice. Otherwise, they would win. Hands down. (laughs) So they need to be dumber. I mean, they're going to either way. But just this way it's a little bit more convincing that they won just a little bit so i did like the drama of oh my new favorite child is chess now because you're like no chess don't do it no that wasn't bad but it's also a little annoying because the black knight didn't deserve it and then she's like you know what i want to see her true fighting capabilities because we haven't totally been doing that oh by the way the book begins and she didn't purge the field yes nowhere in this book does she go purge the field Yes! Thank you for reminding me that! Yeah, no, in the last book, she's like, I have to get back there. I will get back there. And then the twins are like, oh, yeah, we kind of took care of things. Hopefully it'll be good when you go purge the field. And she's like, yeah, totally. Anyway. Yeah, I get all the way to like Anastasia kills one. Or no, 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 uh, the knight. The knight kills one. It's like, but it's going to resurrect because there's no one here to purge it. And I was just like, wait a minute. The football field. Wait, there could be a football game going on. That has no security. And people just think, okay, people are dumb. The new News thinks that someone was doing donuts in the field? That is not what that field looks like. <laughs> ah! I know you're like, what else could it be? But there's not a smooth track of donuts. There are claw marks and there are craters. How would you know? Because I watched the fight last book. Anyway, besides the point. No, I mean, how do you know that doesn't look like donuts? Maybe it does. Maybe it does. <laughs> No, no, it doesn't. That's beside the point. So that happened, right? And she was protecting her friends. And of course, that other fight happened when she was protecting someone. But no, the queen really wants to see her true capabilities. So he needs to bait her into a fight where she's protecting someone. 
Ma'am! But she never got around to doing it. She only did basic fighting in the village, from what I remember. Yeah, it is the village, because, oh yeah, you're protecting people, but then he pulls up, no, actually, I am going to be bad at my job now? Yeah. That's why I had a back and forth about him finally getting a viewpoint. I mean, I just feel like if you didn't, all this would be weird. I liked him better as a villain that was sassy and snarky and kind of creepy in a haha, I keep attacking you way and not a I am attracted to you way for no reason whatsoever. And also I'm going to forsake my queen now. How does it feel that after the first book you were saying in the podcast, literally, this guy, ew. Um, maybe I wanted to feel ew. He's the villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's the next book. But wait, this guy a love interest. I still feel ew. Legitimately. <laughs> I think I've made that very clear. Also, I'm bored, but that's beside the point. That's the problem with the love triangle. It's like, oh, I'm so tired. I don't want to keep up with it. It's boring. I don't care. End up with whoever, Alice. I don't care at this point. I kind of want to see if Courtney gets with someone. I want Chess to get with someone better. I want Anastasia to get up with someone really cool. This is to the point where it's like, hmm, I want to see who actually ends up drawing the short into the straw and gets Alice. It's gonna be Haddish. He's the favorite. It's obvious. Man, I don't want them to do that to my boy. <laughs> my boy. Oh my gosh. Had is okay. Had is not bad, okay? Had is not bad. That's worse than okay. You see that, right? Everyone else in this book is horrible. You're just happy that he has a better perspective than Alice. Yes! You just want that voice actor to keep talking in your ear. I mean, yeah, but <laughs> at the same time, that's not making me bias. I think Hada is actually decent compared to Alice and every other person. I'm glad he had a perspective. He, I actually enjoyed his perspectives. Black Knight, I feel kind of mad about chess. Yeah, I go back and forth. He has so few. But Hada as a person is kind of meh to me. His interesting moments are kind of over. The fact that he is meh in this book makes him pretty good in my eyes. Because this book is a hot mess. And so if a character's meh, I'm like, whew, that's an accomplishment. Because <laughs> I don't like any of the other characters. I'm just bummed that she got three male perspectives instead of giving us another female one. Courtney's perspective would have been amazing. She would be drinking in every single detail of Wonderland. There's all your descriptions. All the people we're seeing are people that are from Wonderland and are used to it. Yeah. Alice aside, she's not good at describing things, period. But Courtney would have had so many descriptions. Now that you bring it up, I would like Courtney to become like Haruta or whatever her name is. With the magic and everything like that, I feel like we should transition away from Alice as much as possible. And since you did such a good job recovering with Courtney, Courtney, just continue it with Courtney. Courtney's pretty bomb. And then she can just look from an outside view on this absolute mess of a love triangle mess and then just can literally just be us. Have our perspective. What's funny is she was kind of encouraging it, but I feel like even at this point, she'd be like, okay, you need to pick someone. This is not Polly set up. This is messy and confusing. Polly has to have boundaries, clear boundaries that everyone agrees upon. Yes. It's not this mess. I mean, I could see Hada, Humphrey, and Alice. Ew. But Adam makes it so clear that that's done. That he doesn't feel that way for Humphrey anymore. That it's in the past. Yeah, which makes it, okay, well, that's not going to happen. And I also don't want Humphrey and Alice to get together. It's weird. Yes, I understand. But what I'm saying setup-wise, it's, I guess, there, except you pointed out that he did clearly say that it was in the past. So, I don't know. Maybe it's Hada, Alice, and the Japanese girl. No, she deserves better. She does deserve better. <laughs> she is so cute and funny. Okay, the group chat at the end with all four of them, D, Dim, Alice, and Haruka, I loved it. I want more of that. Where's our, like... Southgate person, right? Southgate, yes. Where's the Southgate person? She makes a group chat. I'm seriously like, if the Southgate is not in the next book, I swear to goodness. I think they also mentioned that I think it's Haruka, but it might have been the South Gate. Somebody retired because they got a family and children who was like, I have too many responsibilities. 
And I think it was the Southgate person. And they got a new person, but maybe that was Haruka. And that's how she got the job. I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, that's how she got the job. Which, like, teenagers don't have life commitments? I just, ah. You want college kids that aren't going to college. You want that age bracket where they don't want to settle down. They want to have adventures. They still think they're a little bit invincible. The frontal lobe hasn't completely gotten there. But they don't have, I need to go to school. Or I have a wife and children or parents like Haruka they can live at the bookstore this is your marketing major coming out okay (laughs) I don't know how much marketing it might be my MBA talking honestly because it's about management (laughs) well yeah there's that too it's so poorly staffed they need to take a page out of the military ads and stuff like that they gotta be like all right are you between these ages it gets me every time I can't also if I was one of the gatekeepers I would literally just do what Hada did and come invisible and if I'm looking for a new person I'm like all right let me just go hang out around the high school invisible wear your most ridiculous outfit go over the top and then see who can actually seize me be on a unicycle yeah and then when someone's like what the you point towards him you perfect (laughs) come with me I don't know how rare dreamwalkers are, but I don't want to say, hey, they're super rare because they're not looking. If he was like, I have been searching for another person since I've met you and I found no one. Okay, I get it. That is not the vibe. It is literally, oh, I guess Hada will have to find someone new because I'm retiring. Yeah. What just happens? How long? It took her a year. I mean, three months to go to Wonderland, but a year and three months. Ah. You know what this whole book felt like comparison wise? You've compared it to so many things already. I have no idea. Did you read Lightning Thief? Okay, I'm going to be super honest with you here. Sort of. Okay. Did you watch the movie? Yes. Do I remember what happened in the movie? No, because I watched it in sixth grade when it came out and I didn't read the book. So I had no idea what was going on. Uh, Okay. This felt like the movie where it was just jumbled mess. Oh, I can get that vibe. You don't know how exactly they're going to make it to where they're supposed to go. And it's just like, what the heck is going on? Why did you do this? Why are we here? Why? It's like that monkey meme that has his hands out and he's just looking around. It's like, what the? (laughs) Somehow we all end up at the very end to fight the big bad. And it's just like, huh? (laughs) What? I got the next series. You're not going to do the third book? You're not going to write the author just to find out what the name is? No. You know, I'll look it up right now. <laughs> there we go. We've solved your... We can't keep doing this, Hunter. We can't keep picking up trilogies and only reading two of them. <laughs> anyway, we'll talk about that later. Oh my gosh. Courtney. I love her so much. Looking at my notes. So a bunch of things pop out because, you know, red. when they go with the nice healing family with Hatta, they're just like about to die. And then this healing family comes out of nowhere. And then the healing lady's like, oh, Hatta, you need to take a bath. Here you go. And then he gets really sleepy. Am I not the only one that thought she was boiling him alive? Yeah, like a witch sort of scenario. I thought that's where we were going. Was she was actually a monster? It was going to kill him. And maybe it was for good reasons, because technically he is an outcast and not supposed to be in Wonderland. But it could be for evil reasons, where she's like, I am actually a servant of this random queen lady. And then the Black Knight shows up. Yeah, and we have this weird interaction. And we have a really weird moment where Hada's like, oh my gosh, it's you, Humphrey. I love you. And the Black Knight's like, that's weird. Why do I feel like I also feel like that? Anyway, when she's in the house, we have the Red Knight, the White Knight, the Black Knight, right? And Courtney insists, I can fight. I will do this. And she decides that she will be the Knight of Gucci. Yep. I think I love her. Oh my gosh, she just so perfectly, I just, ah. Oh, poor naive Sam. I have a little note where the Black Knight shows up, Had is like, oh my gosh, you're my ex-love. And I was so pumped. I was like, that's how you do a love triangle. Naive, poor little baby Sam. Can we talk about how Nana Kingston gives her this necklace that seemingly supposed to be important somehow, but didn't do anything for the whole book? Yeah, so after the shopping thing, she's like, oh, I have something I need to give you. And it's this necklace that has a crystal rose. And, you know, Alice in Wonderland, roses. I think that was just set up for next book. I guess. 
This is a lot of setup in each book, and I feel like it's unnecessary. There's so much setup. And now that I know it's a trilogy, it falls into the pitfalls of the second book in the series, where you need to continue but still be setting up for the third one, and so it just ends up being more setup than plot. Granted, there is still a lot of plot in the book, so it's not the worst I've seen, but it does fall into those traps a lot. Also, okay, anything else you want to say about that? Because I'm about to go on a different rant. Go for it. Alice mentions Disney? <laughs> I have questions. <laughs> does Alice in Wonderland as a property not exist in this world, but Disney does? Do the books exist? Are the books based on real life events? Do they not exist? You can't introduce Disney on me. Yeah. Yeah, now that you, yeah. Ah. Anyway, to continue on to go back to the plot, everyone finally meets up at the Red Castle. Odabeth is going to do the verse again. Hi, Odabeth. You have been missing for most of this book. But she's going to do the verse again so she can use the eye to find where the heart is. But Alice stops her because, and I put the Red Queen, I guess we can call her the Bloody Lady because that's what Alice ends up calling her. Because at this point, I thought she was the Red Queen like everyone else. But you know. Mm Mm-hmm. And then there's this whole fiend fight and Zelion almost gets murdered again because of course she keeps getting murdered and Odabeth does use the eye but the bloody lady steals it while she's using it since so she has the heart. How does this knight keep getting captured? She doesn't have her armor anymore on so she shouldn't have disadvantage on stealth. So what's up with this? Just because you don't have disadvantage doesn't mean she has a good stealth stat. I don't think her dexterity is very good, period. You don't think so? I mean, I'm just like, gosh, you're obviously a paladin, so you should have something that helps you with stealth. So I like the princess knight trope, but it just, part of it is the knight has a protective nature of the princess, but I felt like we just kept going in circles and it not evolving where Zeleon protects the princess and almost dies and Odabeth is upset about it, but then she heals and then she almost dies and then they get separated and they're both upset about it, but they get back together and Zeleon tries tries to protect her, but almost dies. Uh, You're taking the fun out of this. Yeah. Anyway, everyone gets locked in a cell. The fight doesn't end well for them. They get locked in a cell, and then they're like, there's someone else in here. And I was like, oh my goodness, who could it be? And then it was Maddie. And I was like, I mean, I guess I'm happy to see you, but why are you all in the same cell? This seems like a bad idea. I don't know. Maybe they only have one cell. Okay. Yeah, and because the queen wants Humphrey to kill Alice to prove loyalty. And I get it, but she's not, I don't know. She hasn't been built up enough to me to make commands like that. I don't know. I was just kind of like, okay, just another weird request. It seems more like you're jealous than you're evil. Yeah. But anyway, not to make this messier. Why kill her? Why not turn her into one of those things? I know. You used chess. You used Humphrey. And Humphrey was a very powerful knight. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like I said, it came across more as jealousy than it came across as an evil plan. If she's truly evil. Why doesn't she do? She could have just been like, you've been holding out on me. Well, if I make her join us, would that solve the issue? And it's like, ooh, okay. And then at the end of the book, you have Alice actually join them. And then you have the whole third book and Haddison's point of view, which would make me so happy. And I would actually read the third book. That's the way I think it should have gone. You and this voice actor. (laughs) <laughs> I just think it would be a better time. I think it would be a better perspective, everything like that. No, no, it's plot reasons, I swear. We could introduce Courtney in there, all right? And Courtney can take over Alice's <laughs> position. <laughs> you are not being encouraging enough for my plan, so let me loop you in. <laughs> Here's your part of the fan fiction. No, <laughs> I wouldn't try that. That wouldn't be why I said that. <laughs> no, no, plot reasons, Sam. This isn't about encouragement. I'm not being that obvious. What are you talking <laughs> about? She can take over Alice's point of view, so we can still have the same amount. <laughs> and then we have the meh character and the good character. And then we can have a solid third book. I think it's a great idea. I feel like you're going to be like, and Chess can be there, and he's not a creep. I swear he's totally cool, just like you say he is. Or Chess can just get with Courtney. 
I go back and forth. I don't feel like their personalities match. He's just so passive. And Courtney wants excitement and adventure and not, I don't know, or to say single. I am not sure what she's doing with her life. She doesn't seem to have romantic inclinations of her own. Maybe she's the ace friend that's living through her friends. She likes the twins from the first book. Oh, except she has a crush on the twins. Never mind. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I don't think we find out who that bloody lady is in the third book. You don't know? I can't find it anywhere. <laughs> Look up a plot summary of the third book. Okay. As you work on that. Going back to what we were saying. So she wants Humphrey to kill Alice. But I think she's like, oh, you're not going to? Because she gives the new Vorpal Blade to Chess, which was a whole thing. And I was insulted on Humphrey's behalf. (laughs) Ma'am, he's... Okay, granted, the village thing was probably a a whole thing. But I don't know. She wanted to test her limits, not murder her. So anyway, anyway, Chess has the Vorpal Blade. He ends up dropping it. They describe either Humphrey or Addison. I don't remember which. I think Addison. And Chess is nearly a head shorter than Addison. Yeah, you got that correct. How tall are these people? I was thinking that too. Because I thought Chess was tall. Yeah, because wasn't Alice like top of her head was at his mouth or nose or something like that? Or she leaned against his chest, which makes me think she's shorter than him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where if she leans in... Is at his chest, and I'm over here like, oh, so he's taller, and then Haddison's over here a head taller. I don't think this author realizes how many inches a head is. So is Alice short, or is this like has been hotel, and everyone's like six five and up? <laughs> Are Wonderlandians just really tall? Except Maddie seems short, and so does Anastasia, the Duchess, because I think she wears heels. All right, Alice is probably like your average. Let's say like five six. Okay. And then Chess is like six foot. Okay. And then Haddison's a head taller. A head tall. A head taller. That makes Haddison like six four. Good grief. I don't know how big his head. Let's, what, what's the average size of a head? I'm looking at it right here. And it says the width is six to seven inches. And the height, the length is eight to nine. This man is six, eight, six, nine. I feel like that would be mentioned before now. Six, eight is how tall angel dust is. Oh my gosh. So chin to top is average of nine inches. Good lord, this man is six, nine. Okay, let's give Hatta six, five which is still ridiculous. But let's give Hatta 6'5". That puts Chess... At 5'8". And we've got Alice at what? 5'2"? He's a short king and she is shorte. I have questions about height now. (laughs) Does this include hairstyles? Does Hatta have a big hairstyle? Does Chess not? And that's the issue here? If he's like nine inches taller, okay, and he's a knight, so he's pretty built. I don't know. Maybe he's built, but I always thought of him as a string pull. If he's waving around a, like a great sword. Vorpal blade. Yeah. A vorpal blade. If you look at pictures of any warrior or any modern person who swing around swords for fun or whatever, they have some serious arm muscles. And I'm just thinking, if there's a nine inch difference between them, my God, Haddison's biceps must dwarf chesses. Like, we got a Zabuza over here. And if this man is at the minimum 6'4", and he's got those type of arms, this guy is terrifying. But don't worry, he has some gray eyes and green hair. If I was a little 17-year-old, this guy would scare me. Oh my gosh, we have gone such a rabbit hole, which is appropriate, but it feels so important now. And the first time she meets this guy? Have we aligned? Have our brains aligned and we are both having the same Sam moment at once? (laughs) I don't know, baby. But the first time she sees this six foot four individual with huge arms chop a nightmare in half with his black blade. Maybe he wears a hoodie. Still, you can't hide that type of beef. Are you kidding me? He'd be really tall. This is just the first time I feel like we've talked about height and a head taller than Chess. I'm just saying, like, I'm surprised she didn't run away screaming because that's a big boy with a big sword. (laughs) And I would be terrified. I'm just saying. 
And if Humphrey was going toe to toe with him, they got to be a similar height too. I feel like they're the same height. Yeah. Dang. We got some bodybuilders up in here. Questions. I can't find who the bloody lady is. Oh, that's going to bug you. It's going to bug me so much. There's no actual summary of this book, except for what you get from the back of the book. This is kind of a niche series. This isn't super popular. I think you would have trouble finding it in a bookstore. I found this just randomly one day on Goodreads. I just, I want to know who the bloody lady is. And you shall, when you pick the third book. I'm not picking the third book. You say this. Just like last book, you were like, if the next one has been in it, but I'm probably not. So what book do you want to read? The second one. I have a feeling we'll be back. I'm stubborn. You are, but you're also curious. Oh, you're so right. <laughs> I can't. Because I was looking at a summary of this book, and it literally refers to her as the Crimson Queen. Ooh. What if that is who this is? Like the Red Queen, but not the Red Queen? Maybe someone, I don't know, maybe she had a daughter? Where is the Red Queen? Because my first thought was that she was the Lost Princess. And then I was like, no, Lost Princess is black and she's definitely dead. And then I thought, is this a twisted version of Alice? Like the original Alice? Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at, is the original Alice. That is my theories. I don't know who else this could be. I'll go see if it's a bookstore and just go to the very last page. Wait a second. Okay, I have questions. One of the tags for the third book is paranormal. That is not one of the tags on the first book. And I don't think I'm checking now. Yeah, the second one doesn't have paranormal either. What does that mean? Is she a ghost? Is she a vampire? <gasps> is she a vampire? What is happening? What is paranormal? Oh, we are reading way too much into this third book. Anyway, we're running out of chapters at this point. So the bloody lady shows up and Reflection Alice, which... Uh, so stupid. Reflection Alice is a trope I'm kind of meh on. It's kind of the mentor trope, but it's yourself and the inside of yourself being like, no, you totally are cool. And it just, I don't know. I've always thought it was kind of weird. I'm not a huge mentor trope person because I've never experienced that personally. And it just seems kind of unrealistic unless you're in a school setting or something like that where it makes sense. But just like at normal day life, people don't just like, I will mentor you and show you your ways. Yeah, but Sailor Moon and anime, that's how we do it. Yeah. But yeah, so there's a reflectious Alice. And I thought it was like the Red Queen manifesting as herself to be like, hey, to help. But no, it's just Alice. And at this point, Alice has to confront her grief. And I'm not mad about the scene. I, I do think it's done really well. Ah, because it got me to... She had all of these memories, and then while she was confronting her grief, she was losing some of them, and it was really painful for her. And I was just like, yeah, oh, the forgetting is the worst part for me, too. Forgetting things about people, yeah, that's hard. I mean, that's just a whole nother type of acceptance that you have to go through. Yeah, you have to accept that that happens, and it's just, oh, uh, it's so hard. Yeah, that's the later part of the acceptance that, that everyone talks about. So I think that's done really well. Also, we finally get the mom's name. She's been mom for two books. Oh, yeah. So her dad gives him her some wisdom and it pulls it together, which I kind of like more the parent mentor than her self mentor. So she ends up using the Vorpal Blade, which I always appreciate when the main character can use the cool weapon. But she breaks the heart and then grabs the eye and the weird necromancy shadow things just melt into a puddle. And the blade turns red. I mean, because I guess the Red Knight had a huge blade like that. I feel like someone should have mentioned that that's a possibility when they figured out it was Humphrey. Yeah. So Alice helps get Chess out while Hada helps Humphrey get out, which just really feels like dramatic irony because Alice doesn't know about them and Hada doesn't know about them. the other side. It's just like, ooh, oh, this feels awkward because I know things. <laughs> anyway, Addison is dying. And oh, by the way, he can't be pardoned because two princesses exiled him. So he needs two princesses to not exile him. What type of logic is that? Why was this not brought up sooner? This is a terrible plan! Because wasn't it mentioned she wanted the queen to pardon him? 
Yeah. And then no one mentioned it. And then we get to it and the princess is like, I pardon you. And then they're like, oh, it doesn't work because we need two princesses. And it, I guess we'll have to get your mom and you. Too bad we destroyed the heart. And then I thought, oh my gosh, Alice is a princess because she's crying over him. And she's like, you did a good job and whatever. And I was like, oh my gosh, Alice is a princess and it's going to get pardoned by... No, there is still something going on with Alice. Mm. Anyway, Humphrey just like, well, I don't have her majesty anymore. I don't really have memories of you guys, except sometimes I do, but I guess I'll go with you anyway. And then, like you said, everyone just parts ways. Alice's house gets rebuilt. Humphrey apologizes a lot. Job well done, guys. I'll see you next week. Yeah, same time. Yep. <laughs> I think Humphrey should apologize to Tina, who's Alice's mom, because he apologizes to Alice for ruining her house. Alice don't own that house. Alice isn't paying the insurance premiums from this. <laughs> <laughs> Go apologize to the mom! Yeah. That doesn't happen. Court and Alice have a belated birthday brunch, circling back around to that. And like we said, there's a Dreamwalker group chat, because screw the South Gate, and Haruka still gives Alice butterflies, and that is how we win. And, and my last note is, well, I'm team Hatta Humphrey anyway. We're just keeping all the doors open. There are so many doors. They're not even doors at this point. They're Roman arches. I don't know, man. It makes me very uncomfortable. I'm more confused than anything else. Who do I root for? I don't know. The way she's going about it makes me uncomfortable. It's not even reverse harem. It's just confusing. Can someone just have a conversation with the other person to be like, hey, what? are we? Because even Hatta at one point was just like, yeah, I will get back to life and then whatever I have with Alice, whatever that is. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. And I'm like, yeah, you really, really should. All of you should. Uh, <laughs> you should really figure out where all of you stand. Everyone just needs to have a come to, come to, uh, I don't know any Wonderland deities. Everyone just needs to come to the original Alice moment. I don't know. <laughs> come to the original Alice moment. There we go. We need to figure this out. General thoughts. I stand by if you like the tropes that she uses, you'll like the book. So one question for the author. I want to know when she decided in the creative process that the Black Knight was Hada's love interest. Was this a first book thing? Because I did not get any of those vibes. And then it just shows up in the second book. And it's not, I mean, it's kind of out of the blue, but not in a, that doesn't make sense way. Like, it makes sense. I'm just, was it a first book thing or a second book thing? Because I've totally read series where an author starts with a premise and then through the book, she's like, eh, eh I don't want to keep going with that and changes to something else. So that totally happens in the creative process. I'm just curious, when did she tie Humphrey with Hatta? Uh, same thing with the Black Knight, because I feel like we were going down the road where Hatta is the Black Knight. And only you thought that. You are sitting alone in that delusion. I feel it. I feel it. So I just, I would love to ask her, was I right? Was I close? And then you just switched it up on me? That and the other question, which I've developed through this podcast, is who the heck is this bloody lady? I need to know. Well, there is one way to find out. Yeah, but I think in the third book, she just moves on to a different boss. And we just never get to know. Monster of the Week style? Yeah, I think that's what just happened. Anyways, rating. Playing your hand in poker out of 10. It can be exciting. It can be fun. It can be terrifying. It can be confusing. This was confusing. I still enjoyed playing. You hated it, so you probably lost. Yeah, I should have folded before reading this. Oh, should have folded out of 10. There we go. I had hope and it got crushed. Read again. No. I will. I don't own this one like I own the first one, but if I found it, I had a thrift bookstore, I'd probably buy it. I don't care. I've read worse. I'm sure you have. I've read better. Yeah, this is pretty a solid 7 out of 10 for me. Oh, gosh. I'll give it 5 stars in Goodreads anyway. I'll be generous. I'll just give it a straight 5. Favorite of the series so far? If you had to pick the first book or the second one? I mean, it's going to be the second. I think it's the second. There are things about the second. I don't, I don't know. Oh, but the second book has Night Gucci. And I love her. Let me get more chess. And more Hatta. Eh. 
and the sexy voice actor that does him. I did not have the audiobook. You should get it. I'm sorry. I cannot join you in that ecstasy. But have you read this book? What's your ship in this love web thing? Creature, monster, nightmare. No shape, just nightmare. Do you have any book recommendations for us? Tell us all about it in the comments below. If you like the video, hit like. And if you're enjoying yourself, hit subscribe for more. Thank you for exploring a dream so dark with us. Join us next time when we'll be covering The Mystery of the Blue Train by Agatha Christie. I'm Sam Reiner. And I'm Hunter Malik. And we hope to see you and a friend here next time. Escape With Me Book Club is a Lunar Skulk production. Check us out on TikTok or Instagram to keep up to date with us. Lunar underscore S-K-U-L-K. 